going to talk about the issue of what can we expect from markets in terms of return. We look at it from a historic context, what are those components of return that actually drive your per performance, and what can we expect from markets given how they're priced today. It always surprises me what people expect in markets. Is when I ask my students, what do you expect in, uh, or what do investors have a right to expect over long periods of time, a full third of students believe it's going to be over 15%. 15% is quite a number when you look at it from a historic context or from where the markets are priced today. For you to believe that you're going to be able to generate 15% year after year, there has to be some sort of magical fairy dust that is involved in uh, generating these returns. So let's look at it first from a historic standpoint. What have equities generated over the long haul? The answer is close to 9%. And of that 9%, 2% was driven from stock price appreciations, from actually the stock price moving up. And 7% was from dividends and dividend reinvestment. So you can see that dividends and the reinvestment of cash flows are a key component to how you do over the long term. So what can we expect going forward? And I wanted to build that from the case of looking at what are the components of a return? What are the three factors that enter into the pricing of the stock, a stock, and the market in general? The three components are, number one, is what the company earns or what the company distributes. Number two is the growth. What kind of growth do you have in that? And number three is market multiples. So how much is the market going to pay for that? And we're going to look at how those three work together and then also look at the implications over time. So looking at slide number one, here we're going to assume a company that has no growth but a stable payout. So you can think about that as you know, a coin-operated laundry. It just makes a fixed amount. So let's assume it makes $1,000 a year and you wanted to make 5% on your investment. So how much is that investment worth? It's $1,000 divided by 5% or $20,000. So that's your value of your investment. Now clearly, you know, in this instance, no, there is no growth. So what happens when you add growth? So let's assume that the, uh, the, the company is actually expanding. So in the example of a coin-operated laundry, it's starting to add more and more uh, um, outlets, and it starts to grow by 5% a year. So what's that worth to you? It's $1,050, so 1,000 plus the growth of $50, divided by 5% again, you can see that the company is now worth $21,000 and you're generating a 5% rate of return. Okay, now we turn to slide number three. And what we're doing here is we're going to extend what we've learned in slides one and two. So we're going to take that earnings stream that we've developed in slide two and apply different market multiples. And by market multiples, I mean what are what individuals willing to pay for that earnings stream and that growth in the earnings stream. So we look at that $1,050, if people want a 10% rate of return or 10 times market multiple, that investment is worth only $10,500, fully 50% less than the, uh, the value we generated in slide two. If we use 5% or 20 times uh, multiple, which is what we developed in the first two slides, then the investment is still worth $21,500. And if we move to 2.5% or a full 40 times evaluation, something we saw in the year 2000, that company would be worth $42,000. Looking at slide four, we ask ourselves what happens in 20 years' time? So in 20 years' time, that $1,000 initial earnings grows to $2,650. So when we look at that $2,650 and we ask ourselves, what is that worth at even at 10 times earnings or 20 times earnings, you can see that in all instances, you've made money in that, in that investment. But the key to making money in that investment is that you've stayed with it and you've let the compounding of earnings and dividends over time um, earn you that rate of return. If you simply moved in and out, you'd end up losing that money. But the key takeaway here is that in the short run, equity prices are dominated by change in multiples, what people are willing to pay for that earnings stream. But in the long run, your equity returns are dominated by that earnings and then growth in earnings. And that's what we focus on at Toron. We focus on those earnings and that growth in earnings over long periods of time. And you'll be rewarded for holding those stocks. So now let's ask ourselves, where are current markets priced given where, where, there, where uh, current multiples are. And if you look at the Toronto Stock Exchange, given that it's trading at about 20 times earnings, that, that, the, 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 uh, that 
assuming no change in market multiple, you're going to expect a return of about 5%. So that's about all you're going to be able to get in the, in the TSX. If you're going to actually generate anything higher than that, you're going to have to get a uh, higher mul market multiple, and that can't go on indefinitely. So finally, so we'll, you know, what are some of the stocks we look at? And if you look at the stocks in the Toron portfolio, the stocks that we have are going to have growth rates which are better than the marketplace, and they are going to offer significant value because of the cash they, gen cash they generate. We do the same type of calculation for our basket of stocks, looking at the history that we've had, you're looking at about 9%. So 9% would be a good rate of return. So in summary, for all investors, the key is to look at the long term and how those earnings and dividends are going to grow, not to just focus on the short run and what the market multiples are doing today and tomorrow.